Well, Annie, we've talked about several different strategies today, and I wondered if there was a particular one that you found to be really effective or you've used a, a great number of times. Yes, the one, the one that I like the best, and the, you know, our amazing presenter yesterday talked about it at length, is what I call wait time. And what we have to realize is that as adults, most of us have pretty intact, you know, neurological systems. We can process lots of sensory input at one time. Lots of things can be coming at us and we can take it all in and analyze it and figure out how we want to react to things. But some of these little ones with these very significant challenges, processing is one of their biggest issues. And so what to us seems like a reasonable amount of time with our intact processing system is not the case with these little ones. So for me, whenever I think about asking a child, let's say I'm having them make a choice and I have two concrete objects and I'm wanting them to choose. And I'm saying, you know, choose, which would you like? And maybe I present it on a, on a black piece of Velcro on a little tray and I'm showing hand under hand, this is one option and this is one option and I'm waiting for them to feel it and look at it. Then I pull their hand back and then I say, choose. You know, I hold their hands and say, choose, which would you like? And then I take a little vacation and I wait. Because in order for them to make a choice, first they're gonna have to remember, what the heck were those things that I just was feeling? I can't see them very well, what were those things? And what do I really want to do? And I have to think about that for a while. And then there's motor planning that has to come into play. If I'm going to indicate what thing I'm going to plan, pick, then I'm going to have to plan to lift up this arm and move this hand. That motor planning takes a lot of, that takes a lot of mental energy and time and then indicate my choice. So I always, how do we, I count to 30. I take a vacation and I just wait. Because a lot of times the problem is people don't wait. And then right about the time that the child was ready to muster up a, a response, the choices are whipped away and they go on to something else. And the child didn't ever get to communicate what they wanted. And even if even if I've counted to 30 and I've taken my little vacation and I've waited, I try again. I'll again, you know, here's your first choice. Do you want, the, oh, you want this? And give them time to really explore it. And then, or maybe you want this. Give them time to explore it. And then pull the hand away, but not quite as far maybe so they don't have as far to go. And then again, I put my hands, which, you know, you choose which, you know, and then again, wait. Just wait. Give them the honor of the time they need to muster a response, you know, to, to decide. If after doing that several times they still haven't responded, then you can help them make a choice and say, well, since you're having a little trouble deciding, let me help. How about if, and then take their hand and move it. You know, I want the, and lay their hand and then verbalize what that choice is, and then do that. But waiting, if you wait, a lot of times they will choose or they will respond. And that applies to almost anything, whether it's a visual response or a motor response or, you know, if you want them to make a sound with their mouth or anything that you're asking them to do, give them the courtesy and the dignity and the time to, to answer. So anyway, that's wait. I think waiting is one of the most important things to remember. Don't be impatient. It's a busy, hurried world out there, but not for this little one. This little one needs you to gear down 
gear down and give time for a response.